Hello everyone and welcome back in. This is episode three of our Somehow in Time, our time gap sort of sci-fi fanciful diorama piece where this 40k wave serpent has somehow crash landed into 1940s era middle of the Battle of Britain, England. Well, buckle in, boys and girls, because this is going to be quite the Saturday matinee. We're going to take this from the very beginning of the diorama through every spellbound stepped into final completion. So hang on, and here we go. But before we dive right in, let me give you a big shout out and a thank you to all the folks who support this channel, because out of your generosity, I've been able to up my game just a little bit here, and I now have a hot wire cutter, so I can cut foam a little bit easier than I used to be hacking at it. I'll still be doing some hacking. You'll see that a little bit coming up. But at least I have a hot wire cutter, and I'm looking forward to really putting that into play as I move forward on projects. So let's test drive this thing. I've got some foam from the local hardware store, and I'm just going to cut some pieces into basically the size and shape that I, I need for my diorama base. Really just basically at this point, just kind of cutting out some square pieces just so I have something that's a little bit more manageable. This is certainly nice. I'm liking this. And then I make this ungodly looking thing, but yeah, it looks worse than it really is. And I actually used the hot wire cutter quite a bit on this and it made life quite a bit easier. And of course, on top of that, again, I like to use a wooden base as my foundation for all my dioramas. So this will all be cut to size here. So I'll just glue this on and then I can just kind of right go down, kind of like plane this off. Like if this was a table saw here and just cut off that excess foam and Yep, this is pretty nifty. I'm liking this a lot. Okay, now that we have the edges all trimmed up, now I can kind of start planning out the scene here just a little bit. And this is where the carving comes in because I haven't quite figured out how to do this with the hot wire cutter yet. But I need to make this Wave Serpent spacecraft fit into the scene. So we've talked about that before in other dioramas where, you know, you got to incorporate the vehicle or in this case the spacecraft into the scene. And of course, this guy, this spacecraft is going to be crash landed into this so there's going to be you know quite the divot here now i have a basic you know the, the the spacecraft is pretty much where it needs to be it's kind of sitting there so now it's time to start playing with the scene and this is you know this is no different than when you're five years old or you know say really old like i am just playing with your toys and seeing what looks good and what feels right and so i'm just going to add my little figures here and you know, the basic concept is that these farmers and these townspeople have taken the pilot of this spacecraft prisoner. So I'm just kind of giving a little bit of a look here to see kind of how the layout of the scene is going to end up being. And I think I need some height in the back, so I think I'll put a tree back there where I just stuck my knife into. Yeah, it's getting there. Of course, we know we're making a diorama if I'm using Plaster of Paris. Yes, this is my Witch's Brew. I use it pretty much every time just to kind of unify my surfaces. And even though I, yep, I have this really nice fancy cutter, the hot wire cutter, and I've got this foam laid out, I still have a very uneven surface. And the plaster and the, this Plaster of Paris with the paper and such, it just is such an easy and quick way to do this. Just makes everything nice and even, nice and hard surface. And I don't have to use the nicer texture pastes a little bit later. We'll get to those. I don't have to use those in order to do a lot of the fill work. So I do the fill work with the cheap plaster and I'll come back with the textures later on. Well, I'm going to approach this very much the same way in terms of laying the model into the scene as I did with the Berlin T-34 from a couple of episodes ago. So check that out. I'll put a link up here on the corner here. But basically, I want to be able to get as much of the groundwork done as I possibly can before final weathering or final groundwork and that kind of stuff. So I've wrapped the, I guess you'd call them the leading edges of this spacecraft with some plastic wrap just to protect the surfaces. I'm using some magic sculpt and just kind of sculpting in what will be the holding places or a little bit of the earth that has kind of crept up over the top where this is dug into the earth a little bit. And so basically, now I have a place where basically it locks the, the craft into a certain location and I can slip the craft out, the spacecraft out of this location, do the weathering, do all the scenic stuff that I need to do, and then pop the aircraft back into place and it'll be right exactly where it needs to be in order to integrate everything within the scene. 
And as long as I have the magic sculpt out, I wanted to do a little bit of work on this front edge just to give a little bit of interest to the scene. I thought, well, let's put a little bit of a pond here because this is, you know, a little bit of farmland or whatever. And so this little divot in the corner is going to be cast resin. It will be a pond. And so I need to make the shoreline here. And here's a little bit of a trick. If you've worked with resin before, you'll notice that it kind of creeps up the surface. It's called cupping. It's something you really can't, can't get around. But what I do here is I'm making a little bit of a shelf. So there's a little bit of an undercut on my shoreline. So as I pour my resin, I'm going to pour it so it goes just underneath that little bit of a ridge there. And that way, maybe it won't eliminate, but it will at least reduce that bit of cupping because that's always a kind of an unnatural appearance. Well, next up, let's tackle this tree in the background here. Um, you know my blue bowl of really good stuff? Usually I have some twigs and sticks and roots and things like that in there. Well, apparently I don't have any of those right now. So rather than go out and do a foraging, I decided let's try one of these wire armature trees. And yep, this is the first time I've ever done this type of work, armature, wire armature sort of trees. And how hard can this be? <laughs> Turns out it's not very difficult at all, and within no time, if you twist and turns and twist and turns and twist and turns, you have yourself a pretty decent looking armature. And a little, little test fit here, make sure I've got the right height. Yep, that's going to look just fine. And just around the base, I want to build out that a little bit, so I'll use a little bit of the magic sculpt that I've been using all along. Kind of press that around just to kind of make a little bit of a root base. And now, of course, I don't want to have just a twisted wire-looking tree trunk here going on here. So I'm making this little concoction, a little bit back to those witches' cauldron. A little bit of Mod Podge, which is, of course, you guys all know, it's this acrylic paste. Tint that with a little bit of color. I'm just brushing this on over a few layers. Just let that build up a little bit, and it just kind of seeps into all those little wire cracks. And the actual texture looks pretty darn convincing when you're done. I'm pretty impressed. Not bad for a first try. And so the tree is in the rear corner, so now we're going to bounce back to the front corner. Yeah, I know, I'm bouncing back and forth, but this is the way that I work. <laughs> and to be quite honest, I really have no quite idea exactly how this is going to end up looking when it's finished anyway. The idea of using the Mod Podge is really just to give it a, a nice barrier for the resin that's going to come later. So even though this is over plaster, I'm just going to kind of seal it up a little bit. This is just going to make sure that I don't have any leaks and drips and disasters along the way. I think we have all the preparation done. Now we can start kind of adding the life to the scene. So what I'm going to start working with is the AK Terrains, and this is that acrylic paste. And I'm going to do something a little bit different with this diorama that I've generally done in the past, and that being... In the past, I've usually used these pastes, and then you'll see that I airbrush over the top of them, and I paint over the top of them, and I do all sorts of things to manipulate the color. I think what I want to do on this one is just let these colors speak for themselves. So I'm not going to add any colors. This is kind of my challenge to myself. Let's see what we can do just basically out of the jar. So I've got the earth tone down, the light earth tone down. That's the light sandy color. And along with that, I'll be using dark earth and the muddy earth out of the jar. So let's see how I can do with all this. It might be kind of fun. Yeah, I know we're bouncing around, but let's go back to this front corner. I need to add a little bit of a base color to this pond, and I don't want it to be super dark and murky. It's kind of a blue-gray, blue-green tone, just with acrylic colors, just to give a base over the bottom of this, over the top of that Mod Podge. And now we can start adding onto our base itself. So we've got that established pattern of where the spacecraft has skidded to a halt and now we've got this lush English countryside that right now looks like a desert so we need to take care of that. Just a little bit of PVA glue. No, I don't have any sort of static grass applicator. Do it the old-fashioned way. Just a little bit of PVA glue highly thinned down over the surface and just dropping some static grass over the top. And I don't use static grass that often but I have to say it's kind of it's pretty impressive. It actually looks pretty darn good. Next thing up, see this English countryside and that nice rock wall? Well, I think I want to add one of those. So I've got my little piece of blue foam there. I'm just kind of making a little wall texture. No real rhyme, no reason here. Just kind of, uh, you know, cutting it out and making some little kind of slate sort of slabs in there. 
first with the exacto knife then i come back in with a little dental tool and just kind of expand those gaps a little bit just give some individuality to those particular stones and then after a little while you end up with uh you know half a piece done on one side and so continue continue on here but after a while we finally get done with this and then we need to scribe the top stones just to give those some individuality as well and then i'll take a little bit of time and cut out a few stones on top just to make the top uneven here and there and then of course because we took things away we need to add things back i'll just add a few stones back on top again just to give it a little bit of personality and make things a little bit uneven or i guess natural looking of course this blue wall is just not going to fit the scene very well so i need to add a little bit of color and even texture to it plaster mixed with water and then some acrylic color just in there just to give it the the tones that it needs some coloring and then i'll come back after that dries a little bit and then i start adding a little bit more of the specific weathering effects just kind of random at this point in time because i'm just adding some aging to the stones and then as you continue through this then i just start working on individual rocks and individual bricks to bring out the character let me take just a brief time out to remind you that if you do like this channel, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out. Support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page, and the link for that is in the description below. Over there on Patreon, well, we have a Discord server where we have lively chats. I post photographs of these projects as they're ongoing, sneak peeks, short tutorials on certain techniques and ideas. It's a really nice community, and I hope you would consider joining. Back to the matinee. Okay, we're bouncing back to this front corner with this pond. We're getting serious now. I've added the sides of the base to this because that's going to be a little bit important here for this pond so the resin just doesn't go everywhere. And let me talk a little bit, I guess, I don't know if you'd call this a pet peeve, but I guess I just wonder why. I guess I just wonder why it is that we often see that the edge of the diorama base is cut below the water line and then the rest of the diorama the edge of the base is at the top of the terrain so why do we get to look into the side of the water but not into the side of the dirt i don't know just wondering well speaking of people doing silly things <laughs> why would i build an entire wall across the scene when of course the spacecraft is going to be crashed right through it. Well, that's because I really don't plan out these scenes all that well. I just thought I need a wall and I built a wall. But the nice thing is, is that I can just cut this apart right where it needs to be and affix it to the landscape. And then you might say, but Rick, you keep going back and forth between kind of almost finishing a certain area and then you go back in and add, say, magic sculpt over the top of the grass. And that's just kind of the way that I work. I don't mind going back and forth. Actually, I think that adding the layers and the textures enhances the final scene. Now, if there was any time to really worry about me and how I approach things, it's gonna be now, because now we're working with resin, and this has got chemistry, it's got measuring, it's got icky, sticky stuff that can go everywhere, a lot of things that can go wrong. Luckily, it's a pretty simple process. It's most commercial resins, and this is the AK resin, tend to be a two to one, resin to catalyst. So one part catalyst to two parts resin. And I'm using the handy-dandy disposable cup from my local coffee shop. Get a stack of those and you'll be good to go. And safety tip number one here, once you're done working with the resins, put that cap back on because you do not want to spill this on your table, your floor, yourself, anything else. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a pretty clean pond, but I do want to give the resin just a hint of color, so just a little bit of a drop here. And this is just going to make it just a little bit cloudy because this is a clear resin it looks a little bit dark right now but literally this is just off clear when it once it gets poured i take care on the stirring because you don't want to put bubbles into the resin mix itself because that's going to cause bubbles in your resin and then if you pour in a very thin stream just like this then that condenses and pops those bubbles as they go onto the surface as it drips down so you, you have less bubbles within your resin so now it's just a matter of pouring it down into that little space. Remember, I've already sealed that space up with paint, a little bit of Mod Podge. I've actually added Mod Podge onto the side of the base itself so that naked looking balsa wood has Mod Podge on it as well. So that is sealed as well. And then I have that little bit of a lip and I'm just pouring to the underside of that lip of the shoreline. And then if you plan ahead like I did, 
You do this as the last thing you do in the evening, and then you put a lid on it, and you wait until morning, and you see what you have. Here we go. Next morning, pull that lid off, and we see what we have here. And of course, the first thing you want to do is stick your finger in there, but instead, you save that cup from last night, and you stick your finger in there instead to see if the resin is cured, because if you screwed up with your measurements, that will let you know. Now, ever so gingerly, you just test the surface. Did it work? Yep, it worked. Awesome. Good pour. Nice job, Rick. Okay, so now we're getting pretty close to it. So now it's just a matter of tidying up the edges. And this goes back to my pet peeve about, uh, you know, showing the resin or not showing the resin. So I'm just going to cut the edge of the base to the top of the resin so it becomes part of the scene, not looking into the scene, if that makes sense. And then, yes, once again, a little bit of extra of textures here and there just to clean up those edges, make sure everything's nice and tight along the edge. And this is kind of an important part. So even though I did that little shelf, you can see those reflections in the water in the resin along the shoreline. Well, that's that cupping, and that's the part that looks unnatural. But what I can do here is use a little bit of that texture paste, the terrain's texture, and literally paint over the top and cover those up. So basically extending the shoreline a little bit into the water just to get rid of that little bit of unnatural appearance. This is the part where we're really getting down to the smaller details that are going to make the scene kind of pop to life. So along the stone wall, I've got a few of these boards that were cut from balsa wood. Just give them a quick wash with some oil paint. The edges here, they need a little bit of a refresh with the static grass. No big deal. Onto that rock wall, I want to add some overgrowth. So I've got this natural fiber twine, and I'm just kind of pulling apart all the different fibers here. And those are going to be vines. And then I've got this super sticky Scotch Guard stuff. Do this someplace away from your workbench because it'll be sticky forever. And then out of my cupboard, I've just got some. This happens to be Italian seasoning. You can use all sorts of different herbs. Basil's a good one. Dill's a good one. So and it makes everything smell really, really nice as well. And so once those are stuck onto these little natural fiber twines, then I can just kind of plaster those to the side of these rock walls, and it looks like a bunch of brush and overgrowth that's kind of taking over these. And then I have this really nice pack of wildflowers, I guess they are. And so I just pick a few of these, and I just apply those against the wall as well. And this is all about building up layers. So little pops of color here and there. Just add a little bit of purple, a little bit of white. Just kind of tuck them right in there. Well, I still have that tree in the background, and that's looking pretty lifeless, just a wire armature. I have this foliage, and I just add a little bit of white glue onto these wire armature branches. And then I just pick apart a little bit of this foliage, and it just kind of teases and tears apart. And you can make whatever shape and size you want, and then just lay that over the branches. Here is that big moment where we can start to set in the spaceship for final crash landing. Now, as you can see, all that prior work we did getting that all set up has come into play right now. So this is pretty much locked in there right now. The setting is, is there. We've got a rock wall. We've got our pond. We're good to go. Well, almost good to go because right now it's just kind of sitting on top of the earth. And of course, this has crashed into the earth. So once again, we're going to do some, I don't know, back and forth, backtracking, whatever you want to call it. But we need to add some earth around the impact part, parts of this scene. And that, again, we're just going to use the terrain effects, starting with exactly the same layers as I did before. So the light earth, then we start using the dark earth and a little bit of the muddy earth and just start building up those different layers. Of course, crashing through that rock wall, well, that's going to leave scatter everywhere. So this is where we get to use... The middle section of this rock wall that I made that had no apparent reason. Let's cut out a few of those stones, give them another wash with a little bit of plaster and a little bit of acrylic color, and start placing those so, you know, it looks like this spacecraft just, you know, just kind of eased right in there. Well, if the pigments come out, you know that we're getting pretty close to the end here. And I just want to add a few finishing touches using the pigments. And this is mostly just not so much for color. Yes, there is some color in this, but a little bit more for texture. Because as the earth has moved onto the splashed, I guess, onto the craft as a, you know, spacecraft as it crashed, 
Well, some of those terrain effects are just a little bit too heavy handed. So with a little bit of this pigment, I can kind of mimic those colors and then apply them in a little bit lighter touch. And then along the shoreline, I just want to reinforce a little bit of that moisture that would be from the water. Wet effects, just apply it over the top, just a little bit, just along the shoreline. I don't want to gloss this up necessarily. I just want a bit of wetness. And then the final touch is adding all these figures to the scene. And this was a little bit of a hit and miss. And even though I kind of tried to mock it out, well, I move these figures around a lot. For instance, this little girl here on the front left corner, you'll see her later on on the right side of the scene. It's just, that's just kind of the way I do it. This fellow here, he's going to be moved forward a little bit. But, you know, we play with it like with their toys. And of course, I wanted to add some farm animals because what English countryside doesn't have farm animals? Got some sheep sitting in there. I got a dog sitting back there as well. And now we have our final scene. Well, as the final photographs and the final video shoots kind of roll around in the background here as you're listening to me ramble on here towards the end of this, let me first say thank you very much for following along on this series. This has been something completely different than I would ever have expected to do, but God, what a lot of fun this has been. So I hope you've enjoyed it as well. As modelers, we always talk about getting out of our comfort zone or trying to reset from time to time. And this was one of those projects for me. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining along with this project. It, again, if you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe. And please consider joining Patreon. I'll see you in the next series. Take care, everybody, and happy modeling.